In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Well, welcome to you all as we come together for our Mass today. It's the feast of St. Bernard, who was a very wise Cistercian monk. He provided a lot of helpful leadership for the church at a time when they were having a lot of internal squabbles. Imagine that. <laughs> he is also known, he was a Frenchman, and the Cistercians, of course, who he had a large hand in reforming. There's a lot of reformation being done even before the Reformation. But he was at a place called Clairvaux, and St. Bernard's, if you look up St. Bernard on the internet, the first thing you get is all about the dog. But St. Bernard of Clairvaux is a patron of a number of parishes here in the Archdiocese of Melbourne at Coburg, I think, Bacchus Marsh, and also a neighbour from my time at Geelong at Belmont, St Bernard's in Belmont, and also patron of a school, St Bernard's College in Essendon. So St Bernard gets a fair Guernsey, so to speak, here in the Archdiocese of Melbourne. If you're further afield watching this, well, you're very welcome to be part of the Diocese of Melbourne virtually, but you're also very welcome as part of our parish here at St Simon's in Roeville. Let's just pause for a moment now and we'll ask God's forgiveness for our sins. Lord Jesus, you call your people to turn away from sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You teach us wisdom and you write your truth in our inmost heart. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You forgive sins through the ministry of reconciliation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, you made the abbot St. Bernard a man consumed with zeal for your house and delight shining and burning in your church. Through his intercession, grant that we may be on fire with that same spirit and grant that we may always walk as children of light. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ecclesiasticus. Whoever fears the Lord will act like this, and whoever grasps the law will obtain wisdom. She will come to meet him like a mother and receive him like a virgin bride. She will give him the bread of understanding to eat and the water of wisdom to drink. He will lean on her and will not fall. He will rely on her and not be put to shame. She will raise him high above his neighbours and in full assembly she will open his mouth. He will find happiness and a crown of joy. He will inherit an everlasting name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, Lord, teach me your decrees. Lord, teach me your decrees. How shall the young remain sinless? By obeying your word. I have sought you with all my heart. Let me not stray from your commands. Lord, Lord teach, teach me, me your, your decrees. decrees. I treasure your promise in my heart, lest I sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. Lord, teach me your decrees. With my tongue I have recounted the decrees of your lips. I rejoiced to do your will, as though all riches were mine. Lord, teach me your decrees. And please stand to acclaim the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Remain in my love, says the Lord. All who live in me and I in them will bear much fruit. Alleluia. Alleluia. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to speak to the chief priests and the elders of the people in parables. The kingdom of heaven, he said, may be compared to a king who gave a feast for his son's wedding. He sent his servants to call those who had been invited, but they would not come. Next he sent some more servants. Tell those who have been invited, he said, that I have my banquet all prepared. My oxen and fattened cattle have been slaughtered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding. But they were not interested. One went off to his farm, another to his business, and the rest seized his servants, maltreated them and killed them. The king was furious. He dispatched his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burnt their town. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but as those who were invited proved to be unworthy, go to the crossroads in the town and invite everyone you can find to the wedding. So these servants went out onto the roads, and they collected together everyone they could find, bad and good alike. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. When the king came in to look at the guests, he noticed one man who was not wearing a wedding garment, and he said to him, How did you get in here, my friend, without a wedding garment? And the man was silent. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him out into the dark, where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The parable we've just heard is one of the more curious ones, if you look at it at face value, and talk about the king and his son, the prince, I guess, and it's the royal wedding. Now, from our perspective, we say, who in their right mind would knock back an invitation to the royal wedding? And what's the most recent one we had was uh, Harry and Megan, I think, wasn't it? Well, that's a, an, on <laughs> an ongoing story. And that wedding, of course, will probably be most famous for, dare I say, the sermon. The bishop who went on and on and on, fancy that. But <laughs> so royal weddings, you wouldn't normally knock them back. But that's not the point of the story. The point of the story we know of is Jesus talking about the different prophets who were sent to prepare the way for the coming of the Messiah. And those invitations were knocked back. And the people who brought the invitations were often attacked and killed or injured or whatever. So it's a rugged history to which Jesus is referring. But if we take the word invitation on its own level, we receive, presumably, over the course of a lifetime, anyhow, certainly, perhaps quite a number of invitations, means someone has requested our company. Now, how do we respond to that? We look at the date, and it might not suit us, or it might. We look at the person who's inviting us, and maybe we say, why would they be inviting me or us? And then we think of the other people that they've invited to the same function, and we say, am I going to be bored to tears, or will I meet someone exciting there, and so on. Ultimately, though, an invitation is issued and down the bottom somewhere, it's got an RSVP. In other words, let us know what your decision is about the invitation. And that's the key point. When we get an invitation, it is not a command performance. Well, certainly the word doesn't mean command performance. It might be hoped that we will attend. It might mean that we are welcome to attend. Sometimes the person who's issued the invitation might think, well, I'm not sure about them, but I'll send the invitation at any rate. But there is, once it's received, it requires a response. And that's maybe the special message that we can take with us today, that every day is an invitation. 
it doesn't necessarily turn up in the mailbox or in the email or even in a text. Well, it might. It may well be an invitation, not in a formal sense, but an opportunity that somehow God in his goodness sends to us maybe in a comment that we hear, maybe in a news item that we hear reported, maybe in a thought that comes into our head, and maybe something very specific. Maybe someone who rings us up and says, why don't you? Why don't you do this and why don't you do that? Or I'd like you to do this. Or, very specifically, can you do this for me? That's an invitation. It's not a command and we have free will. And we can either ignore it or we can pick it up. Now we make those sort of decisions all the time. It's not just a formal invitation that comes our way. It's those small opportunities during the course of the day in which we know the way life is lived, that God gives us invitations. There was a story that I saw in the paper the other day about Mark Thompson, Bomber Thompson, the former Geelong Premiership coach, and he's had some tough times in recent years. But he's would appear and hopefully it's, it will pan out that way, that he has put his life, beginning to put his life back together again, totally separate from football. But the headline in the paper on Monday said something along the lines of, the police knocking on my door was the best thing that happened to me. Police knocking on the door, the best thing that happened to you? How's that be? Well, it was the thing that made him wake up to where his life was going. That was an invitation. It was an invitation which over time to which he has responded. And he's put football aside. You think he's working with his brother making tables or something along those lines. But the main thing is he received an opportunity, an invitation, and the grace of God was there. And he's accepted that. And I was pleased to see that. Some years ago, I attended a talk that he gave when he was coach of Geelong. And I remember being extremely impressed with him and thinking, well, if I was a parent of a young man playing for the Geelong Footy Club, I would be very pleased that my son was under his tutelage. And that's the way it was in those days. Things can change as they do, but they can change back again. So invitations, we all get them. We all receive them in any number of different ways. Let's pray that we can use our will, our grace, our strength, our inherent decency that God gives us to be able to make the right choice, the true choice, the faithful choice, and respond to God's invitations as warmly and as generously as possible. Christ greeted us with good news. May the world hear it through us and find hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We praise and thank you, Lord of heaven and of earth. You are the hope and joy of people in every age. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. May the coming of Christ transform the church and renew its youth and vigour in the service of all people. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, grant us a true knowledge of salvation, so that freed from fear and from the power of our foes, we may serve you faithfully all the days of our life. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. From our memorial book today, we pray for the repose of the souls of Rene Ricardo and Lorraine Sinclair, both of whose anniversaries of death occur today. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. to share in the divinity of Christ, humble himself to share in the humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us. Please, for the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, bless you, Lord. Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, we offer to your majesty the sacrament of unity and peace. We celebrate the memorial of the Abbot St. Bernard, a man outstanding in word and deed who strove to bring order and harmony to your church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all your people. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour are yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously, Grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now, as best we can, wherever we are, whoever we may be with, and socially distanced, of course, we offer each other a sign of friendship and peace in Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our spiritual communion prayer, which we say on this Mass from St. Simon's each day, and which is being said by people all over the world in the circumstances that we all share during these very difficult times, is one which unites us with each other, unites us very much with the Eucharistic Lord. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord, as we honest and burned, may the food we have received produce its effect in us. Strengthened by his example and instructed by his teaching, may we be caught up in love of your incarnate word, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just uh, especially aware of over the last few days of people who, for many circumstances, are finding life very, very demanding indeed, while it's pretty true across the globe, of course. It's for some, especially difficult in terms of sickness, others in terms of worry about employment and where kids are going, exams, all those sort of things are uh, very burdensome for people at this time. And uh, hopefully our little Mass from St Simon's is something which helps you to carry that across a little bit more effectively. And we ask the Lord will continue to strengthen you in doing that. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.